All right, welcome back. This is a follow-up to the last video. This is going to be part two. Um, corrections. I did some things wrong. And updated information. So before I go any further, I want to give out a very heartfelt thank you to OSCS on YouTube. Just seemingly a wealth of knowledge when it comes to OpenSUSE uh, micro OS and... In my case, I'm running micro OS, but they're, as far as I can tell, they're going to rename the KDE version to OpenSUSE Kalpa. So not only did this sweet, sweet soul of a human being answer my questions that I had, but also answered questions that other people had on my channel. Just an absolute heartfelt thank you. So we're going to take a look at some of the things that OSCS has mentioned here. Uh, starts out with great. Somebody said great is a single user toy box. Flat packs are user, not system. OSCS says you can use FlatHub Remote Repo as a user flat pack and system wide flat pack at the same time. Sweet. I don't have anybody else using my computer, but still, for people that do, that is awesome. Um, right here. On OpenSUSE Kalpa, that is micro OS KDE version, they prefer you use flat packs. And if you use transactional updates, you need to reboot every time to get a new snapshot. Awesome. That's that's awesome. That snapshot is part of what this immutable containerized thing is all about. Um, you just needed to reboot after installing InkStitch by RPM. Now, I'm going to stop right there and go, once I install the flat pack, I am absolutely certain that Inkstitch will work. It's installing the flat pack version of Inkscape. I am certain that Inkstitch will work. And I'll also have the uh, several, many of the other extensions pre installed that I look forward to having again. So I think this is 100% a fix, and I think I'm actually liking this. Okay. Sorry for the excitement. Back to it. By the way, during the install, I would change time zone host name, which I did host name. So we don't get localhost at localhost. And time zone. I kind of let the OS go out and fetch the t current time. So I might look into that. And the firewall is disabled by default. Whoa. That is awesome. So I am so accustomed to used to um it's such a habit for me to go at, at the end of the screen on an open install to click that button that little link that's right next to where it says firewall i didn't even read it i did not read it because i just know from habit that i need to click that little link to disable the firewall and apparently when i said disable your firewall you probably don't need it I actually enabled it because it's disabled by default. Awesome. Thank you. Um, let's see. I accidentally, you accidentally enabled the firewall. OpenSUSE Kalpa and Micro OS will automatically update itself to, to manually update the system. You use sudo transactional update dup. OpenSUSE Kalpa is a new name for OpenSUSE Micro OS KDE. I mentioned that a minute ago. OpenSUSE Micro is based on Tumbleweed. So, yeah, I love Tumbleweed. So, maybe I like Micro OS even better now. I don't know. I'm going to run through another install. We're going to do Inkscape Inkstitch again with flat packs. I am actually planning right now, if all that goes well, I'm going to install it on my laptop on one of my many laptops so yeah all right somebody asked do you need to reboot every time you install something answer oscs says only if you use transactional update if you use flat packs you don't awesome and then i replied with i can i can flat pack install inkscape if so that fixes most of my problems i think answer yes on the first login the three apps that were installed we're user flat packs from FlatHub. And in case you missed the first video, I will link it somewhere above my head right now. Um, 
just wow. So let's take a look at some of the things that were mentioned. You can see I'm going for a another brand new install of Micro OS KDE version, also known as Kalpa. And I made it to this screen right here because you don't need to see all that other stuff again. It's a little on the slow side. Time zone. Okay. Okay. That's a, that's simple. Oh. Except. That's easy enough. Nice. Um, again, network configuration. Go into host name. Name that to something so you don't get localhost at localhost at dot localhost yeah um i just did micro os on the first one i'll just do that again on this one hit next and this does take considerable amount of time to update okay so i paused i paused the recording while that was taking place and we're back to this screen now here's the kicker scrolling on down security firewall will be disabled Wah that's cool and then i did enable it in the other video just because i'm used to clicking on it but yeah that is cool we're gonna go ahead and click install install so we have rebooted and here is the the three applications that was mentioned firefox being the first one that uh, these are installing as flat packs so while it's doing that, I'm going to do just like I did in the other one and change my desktop settings. 19 by 10. Thank you very much. Much better. And now we're installing calculator. Another flat pack. And the other one was ARC, but it went through it so quick, I guess it just didn't show up. I am going to go ahead and do a manual update, which is transactional hyphen update. Is that right? Dup, and I need to sudo that. Sudo. Hey, I did do it right. <laughs> okay, so after the update, we will have to reboot. I do wonder what they're doing for Codex. When you install Tumbleweed, you have to opi Codex. And I'm assuming the same thing in uh, Leap. So I wonder what they're doing for Codex in Micro. Okay, let's reboot. All right, reboot back up. Reboot is back up. Words, they're hard. I want to look at Discover. Discover on here? It is. Now that I have this knowledge, I'm betting that Discover shows you flat packs. Okay. Uh, no Inkscape here. Let's go to graphics. Uh, no Inkscape there. Let's just search for it. Inkscape. There it is. Let's click details. There is no uh, distributed by Flathub. There you go. It is a flat pack. I'm going to install that. While that's installing, I'm going to go ahead and jump on Firefox and go get Ink Stitch. And we're going to get just the RPM version. And it is done. Okay. That is installed now. Launch. I got, I like dark. Save, save, thanks, new document. 
Please be extensions. Oh. Oh. Awesome. Okay. Now I'm going to go into downloads. I do like the panel terminal right here. I don't. How do I install an RPM if I'm not going to use transactional updates? Or do I do it that way anyway? Hmm. Intriguing question. What if I do it without sudo? What happens then? PKG, right? Install. I'm doing this from yesterday's memory. Oh, you know what? I don't want. I'm going to try to do the first one. I'm going to do it without sudo and see if it doesn't go to root. Maybe it needs to. I don't know. Probably going to tell me application not found. Yep, command not found. So we'll put sudo back on there. Thirty new packages are going to be installed. Okay, let's see what happens. Right, what? Retrieving Inkscape. I installed Inkscape. So now it's doing a transactional update install of Inkscape. Hmm. Okay, let's reboot. I suddenly have doubts. Like, pretty strong doubts. I don't think this is going to work. Alright. See what happens. Come on, be the club. No ink stitch. Disappointing. Okay, so in that case, go back to ink stitch. We're going to get this one and we're going to get the installer script version because I know I have had RPM and installer script work on flat packs, so I know it's there. So maybe it's the Linux SH version. Let's find out. Um back up into here I wonder if I even still have the do I even still have the uh, flat pack version did it overwrite ah. disappointing remove let's just remove ink stitch and inkscape
which is going to require another reboot. Okay, first things first, do we still have Inkscape? We do. So it has to be the flat pack version. It has to be. Okay, we're going to go into Dolphin and we are going to go to Downloads. And we're going to run that. I'm going to try it again without sudo. So sh dot forward slash ink stitch. Oops, wrong button. Ink stitch tab completes. Installing ink stitch to home buzz config inkscape extensions ink stitch. That's exactly where it should be. And I didn't sudo. I think this worked. Ah, getting ahead of myself. I think this worked. Extensions. Ah, no ink stitch. Disappointing. Hmm. We go into. That should be where it needed to be. System. Ow, ow, ow. Uh-huh. So it is a different one. So we're gonna we're gonna open this up. Dolphin. Why wouldn't I? And then we're gonna go to where it usually is, if I can remember where that is. We need to go home. I need to see. Hidden files. Config. Inkscape. Extensions. Ink stitch. Yeah. Right there. So if I copy that and put it in this extensions. What do you think? I need to close Ink Stitch or Inkscape rather, and open it back up again. New document extensions Ink Stitch. There it is. It's possible. It works. And I have my other extensions that I was looking for. So, still disappointing, but not a make or break. It. It's not a deal breaker. Other than the fact that I'll just stick to tumbleweed and won't have that problem. So, flat packs install to an app folder. Okay. Alrighty. Anyway, I consider this to be a 90% success. Almost was able to do everything that I wanted from it. And with a little bit of work around, it worked. So, not a fail for sure. Firewalls off by default. Awesome. Things work through Flatpak. You install by Flatpak. You do not have to re restart your system. System updates are supposed to happen automatically. They come from Tumbleweed. It's uh, certainly a lot better. I feel a lot better about Micro OS than today, right now, than I did yesterday, right about now. So, so once again, my heartfelt thank you to OSCS for clarifying a lot of that which was not clarified especially by me in that last video and uh, other than that until next time thanks for watching